Hey guys, welcome back to Aimless Moto. Today I'm going to show you pretty much the progress I've made on these two bikes over the past week. I've decided that the red bike is going to be the bike that I'm going to rebuild. And I found out that I can actually take all of the electrics from the blue bike to make the red bike a, a, uh, an electric start motor instead of just a kickstart only. And there's a reason that I want that because when I was trying to get the bike running, I ended up breaking the kickstart off the red bike. So let's uh, take a look around and I'll show you what's going on. I've basically stripped down the blue bike to the bare essentials. Suspension, frame, wheels, tires, and the seat, and the tins. The, this is the air box from the red bike. I just kind of shoved it in here so it was out of the way and I knew where it was. The only thing I really have to take off of this bike now to get the other bike rolling is this bolt because that bolt on the red bike is completely rusted out. That was the that's the ground actually off the battery for the red bike. And I have to remove the dynamo, which is this guy right here. I tried using a standard pulley puller on it and I, I would damage it if I had used that. So I have on order a it's a 18 by it's an 18 millimeter by 1.5 thread uh, to thread into there and pull it out. Normally on these bikes, something like the the headstock nut or the rear axle is actually an 18 millimeter. On this bike, unfortunately, they're both uh, 16 millimeter, so they won't fit. I was able to rebuild the carburetors. I boiled the bodies in um, lemon juice for about 20 minutes a piece, and they came out pretty spotless. I was able to polish the top and the bowl, polished all the brass on them. And I did get the bike to run. I'll, I'll show you a quick clip of it running. It was only running on one cylinder and it only ran for about five seconds, but it showed progress. It showed um, that, you know, at least the motor is healthy. I also did a compression test on the motor when it was dead cold and there was no oil in it. And I was able to get 100 to about 105 PSI per cylinder. So that's pretty good for a bike that's been sitting for so long. I know that after I run it for a little bit, I'm gonna have to recheck that. Um, in order for it to, ran, uh, to run, I actually had to take the condenser out of this bike and stick it in that bike because I wasn't getting any spark. And it was only running on one cylinder, so I think the points are gonna need to be replaced. Could be the coil, but I did remove everything off this bike that I would ever possibly need. I did end up taking off all four exhausts just to kind of come up with an idea for a custom exhaust. I want to chop the mufflers off all these, and then I have all these bends that I can use if I want to chop something up and make a custom exhaust. I have, I should have all the pipe I'd ever need, I would ever need. Plans going forward. So I, I have the complete harness, the switch gear, everything I'm gonna to need to switch the red bike over to an electric start. Again, the only thing I need to get off the blue bike now is that starter clutch and the dynamo. And then that blue bike is gonna go sit out in the field somewhere and just rot because I, no, this is this is the reason why I didn't want to use the blue bike is as I started digging into it if you can see around the head Let me see if I can focus on it See all that splooge coming out of the head there's splooge around every single case seam I don't know whether it was to try to stop an oil leak or what I also noticed that this tappet cover is a different size than the others the others are all 13 mil. That one is a 17 mil. So somebody had been into this bike, um, you know, with 8,000 miles on it. It, I, I don't know what it could have needed, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been torn apart pretty good. As you can see on the red bike, it looks like no one has ever been in there. You know, all the seams are clean. You can see the old gasket's still in there. There's absolutely no leaks in any place anywhere on the bike. I'm going to rebuild these forks on the red bike. Um, as far as like the style, I don't know, depending on what I want to do with the exhaust, I might I might put in like a, a brush guard here, kind of wrap underneath. Um, uh, that's a plan. I don't know what I'm going to do for paint yet, but I've kind of figured out what I'm going to do for the back fender, which looks kind of cool. And this is, you know, this is how the stock fender is, and this is the stock fender off the blue bike. Now what I want to do is put this fender 
up into the frame as far as it'll go and just kind of have this little, it's kind of just this little bit of ducktail sticking out of the back. Let me see if I can get a further away picture of it. It's something kind of like that as opposed to that. That's kind of the idea I want to go for. So it looks like there's, there's plenty of room up underneath. I could probably put a, a stud or a bolt back on the back side of this to use the stock mounting hole. If not, you know, I can always drill it out, make it work. And then I'm gonna chop the frame off right here on, on this bike. It's better to see, it's easier to see here. So I'm gonna chop the frame off here and match it up with this pitch of the seat and put a loop across the back and probably run an integrated LED tail light with turn signals in the loop. And then I'll just have that little ducktail kind of kicking off the back here that I can try to mount a license plate to or mount a license plate off the swing arm or something. But that's kind of the idea for that. I do want to use the stock seat, um, mainly because it was really comfortable and this is going to be a commuter bike. And it kind of keeps with like the tracker look. You know, I don't need a completely flat seat, but at the same time, you know, it, it does look a little bit more of the part than say that king and queen seat. Plus it still has the nice Kawasaki badge on the back and I want to so, keep that. The next few products you guys are going to see are going to be revolving around electrical, are going to be revolving around body mods, frame modifications, and conversion of kickstart to an electric start. Um, Hopefully the next time you see this bike, the engine will be out and it will be on the bench getting rebuilt. Um, like I said, the compression's really good, so I shouldn't have to dig too far into it. If anything, it's going to be taking covers off, cleaning covers, doing the valve clearances, um, you know, basic stuff like that, and then doing dress up to the motor. So again, guys, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this build, you know, starts progressing the way I want it to now that I have all the parts that I need. And uh, we're actually working on one bike now. To move forward so uh subscribe for more and uh if you want to see more leave me a comment leave me a comment on anything you want to see as far as how to do a compression test i did do a video on that I just haven't uploaded it yet um how to clean the carburetors i do have a video on that but uh, i don't think i've ever done a video on how to boil with lemon juice and uh yeah hit me up comment down below uh links in the description of any parts that i'm going to be using on this bike and any uh, uh vendors that have helped me out through the way and uh, yeah, so thanks again. I wanted to end this video with a bit of a success story. So I was able to get the bolt in and I was able to get the dynamo off. And as you can see, it has the starter clutch on the back. Now, in order to remove this, you simply pull this out, take these three bolts out, and this whole starter clutch will come right off the dynamo. And this dynamo looks like it had been tried to been uh, pulled before because I didn't grab it back here but it looks like somebody else did. But as you can see, let's see if I can rotate it here where you can see it. Right here on the tabs that I did try to pull, you can see how they focus. On the tabs that I did try to pull, you can see how they raised up a little bit. So that might cause some interference on this uh, outside ring here in the stator. And that stator definitely needs to be cleaned out, but it's all in good shape. Nothing looks burnt, nothing smells burnt. It looks to be in pretty good order. Um, so yeah, that's great. So now officially the blue bike is done. I am done pulling parts off it. It is out in the backfield. It is going to sit there and rot until I need engine parts off of it, which possibly could happen. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, in the meantime, I had been playing with the uh, dashboard. I was actually able to take the blue bike's speedometer and... Uh, odometer and I was able to roll them back to like the 49992 so um, it's going to be closer to the actual mileage of the red bike I will spin this up to the actual mileage of the red bike before I reinstall it but what I was going to do was see if it was at all possible to install LEDs in the face of this gauge so I can only have one gauge and get rid of the um, this idiot light stack with the ignition in it so I want to try to mount the blue, red, and yellow, and green LEDs in the bottom of this. And it looks like there's plenty of room there. So I'm going to try that. 
uh, next. That's going to be the next thing I got to do. And I only want to run the speedometer with the idiot lights. So this harness is going to get have to get hacked up and slimmed down. And this mounting plate used to mount like this through the top of the triple tree. What I want to do, however, is flip it so it mounts to the bottom of the triple tree and kicks it down about two inches from where it was sitting before. And the other thing I got to do is figure out the geometry of where to cut this tab off. It doesn't matter, they're both the same. But I have to cut one of these tabs off so that way I have the mount for the back of the uh, gauge that I am going to run and somehow move it to the middle of these two points. I think if I actually follow these lines and if I hack it off here and hack it off here, uh, I should be able to weld this section over here and it should work out just fine just in that configuration and get rid of this center stack with the three holes. But have it woo, tangled. But have it uh, mount this way so that way it's underneath the triple tree. And I won't have to worry about anything in here. Just as long as I keep the geometry of these two studs the same and this mounting bracket moved to the center. I may even be able to weld it right on the bottom here to the top of where this existing hole is. And that would put... I'm going to use the tack because it's the only gauge I have. It might put it right there, right in the middle, and drop it down lower than where it was before. Now, those holes are actually pretty close. That's the other thing I was thinking of doing. We'll see if I can just cut this off as a circle, as a half circle, and utilize these two spots to center mount this. But that'll be a project for another day, and that's it. If you like, uh, please hit that subscribe button down there, and uh, we'll catch up with you on the next section of this project going forward. So right now we're all on the red bike. The blue bike is done. We're moving on to the actual bike that's going to be the project. I'm so excited. All right, guys. Take it easy. We'll catch you on the next one.